Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Limitless Backpack from Graphene X. And the company is well known for making some really impressive technical clothing. I featured a couple of items from them in a few videos earlier this year. And I was excited to see them announce this new backpack, which seemed to offer a very impressive feature set. Really seemed to check off a ton of boxes for what I look for in an ideal kind of all-purpose bag. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what it's been like to test this over the past couple of weeks. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall aesthetic, the appearance here is fairly minimal and subdued, which I really like. Reminds me of some of the other modern tech bags that we've featured on the channel. You can tell that there are still some straps and attachment points, so definitely a little bit of a functional vibe, but it's not overwhelmingly so. Still really versatile. It feels like it's going to blend in nicely into an office setting if you need to use this for work, as well as for exploring a city or traveling. As far as the materials, the bag feels pretty solidly built. This exterior fabric is a 900D polyester that has graphene integrated into it, and so it feels like it's gonna hold up well to rougher usage and also provide a decent amount of weather resistance. The bag comes in at just under three pounds, which is pretty good considering all the features and the size of the bag. And then you also have some very well protected aqua guarded YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was happy to see that you have two external water bottle pockets, one on each side. These offer a pretty decent amount of space. I was able to easily fit the 20 ounce water bottle that I typically have with me. There might be the ability to add something a little bit thicker, probably up to a 26 ounce Yeti Rambler or something similar with the elasticity that's provided in the compartment. But depending on how packed out the main area is, and with some of the other compartments that the bag offers in this similar area, you might have to pick and choose, you know, kind of how you distribute the space, but still like that these are offered. I like that because of the elasticity, when they're not in use, they just hug the bag to maintain a cleaner overall look. And then this is also nice that they're paired with these compression straps along the side, which are always helpful for, you know, tightening the bag down, particularly when it's not as full, but also for securing additional items. If you have something taller that you want to pair with the water bottle pocket, they have these really interesting buckles that are not magnetic or clips that I've seen before. This is kind of a newer system here. You put it in, you slide back to lock. And so it feels really secure. It's fairly easy to get them on and off. And then you can use it with this pocket or on their own. And then on the front of the bag, you have a little loop at the bottom that's gonna be a good spot for a bike light. And you also have some reflective kind of accenting on that, as well as on these additional clips at the, uh, at the top of the bag, which are meant to pair with a kind of net that's hidden away at this zipper pocket at the bottom. This is pretty unique. I haven't seen this on a ton of different bags, but as this is meant to be kind of a commuter bag, this is excellent for holding something larger like a bike helmet. So they attach with these similar style clips here at the top, and then you can secure your helmet, maybe an additional pair of shoes, a jacket. So nice to have that flexibility and then that you can just put it away if you don't wanna use it. On the bottom of the bag, you have these nice pads that are gonna help provide a little bit more traction and protection when you're placing the bag down on a rougher surface. The full bottom is not making contact, which will hopefully help extend the lifespan of this area of the bag, just keep it a little more protected. The bag is able to stand up fairly well on its own, has a pretty wide bottom. And you know, this will always depend on how it's loaded out. You can see that it leans forward a little bit. So if the weight is not properly distributed, it might tip over. Uh, so something to keep in mind, but good that you at least have some ability to do that. And then at the top of the bag, you have a really nice carrying handle, well reinforced, and it has this soft kind of gel-like padding to just make it really comfortable to pick the bag up. Feels like the, this is gonna hold up well and just another comfortable way to just kind of maneuver the bag when you need to. As far as the capacity, the bag comes in at about 25 liters, which is a really sweet spot for me as far as a bag that can work for all types of use cases. So it might be a little bit larger than what some people like for everyday carry, but I was able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me. I had some leftover space and it still manages to maintain a pretty slim silhouette, even when it's a little bit more packed out, making it great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit or carrying onto pretty much any domestic or international airline. 
Taking a look at the harness system, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. They have a pretty decent amount of padding. It's really soft, broken in, and comfortable. It doesn't feel quite as robust as something like one of the Air backpacks. You know, they have that really cushiony, premium feeling mesh. So this doesn't quite feel like that, but it still does a good job. On the inside, you have a nice breathable mesh to help prevent moisture from building up. The straps also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. On the straps, you also have a couple of attachment points, some loops here that you can use to clip on, maybe a light or hang your sunglasses. You also have a few D-rings and then an adjustable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. Moving into the back paneling, this has also been really comfortable. You have the same type of padding that we saw on the straps and it's well distributed throughout the back. You also have the same breathable mesh and the padding also has some ridges to provide a little bit more airflow and comfort. There's also some slight elevation here. The air channel is not quite as deep as I would typically like to see, but it is enough to provide a little bit of ventilation and airflow while you're walking around throughout the day. At the bottom, you also have the ability to add and remove a waist belt. And a cool thing about the waist belt that the company has created for this bag is that it doubles as a mini sling bag. So it has this compartment here with a nice well-protected zipper that's gonna be a good spot to toss in your phone, your keys, a wallet, if you don't wanna carry your whole backpack around. And then when you wanna use it as a waist belt, you just put it through this opening at the bottom and then it helps distribute some of the load off your shoulder. So I'm always a big fan of not only when the waist belt is fully removable, but the fact that it's multi-purpose like this just helps add a nice amount of versatility. So really cool idea there. And then on the back, you also have a nice luggage pass-through that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. And at the top, you have an additional small zipper compartment that's gonna be a perfect spot to maybe store some backup cash or an air tag. Jumping into the organizational options, this is definitely an area where the bag stands out. There is a lot of different pockets distributed all throughout. It can almost feel a little overwhelming depending on how much you need to carry. And so starting off on the front, you have two really nice zippered quick access pockets. I'm always a fan of this type of layout as I find myself using these a lot throughout the day. So starting off at the top, again, well-protected zippers on these. And this one here, uh, you do have a good amount of volume, which is always important for these types of compartments. You'll notice that in some of these, I don't really even have that much stuff just because there's so many different places to kind of distribute everything. So here I have my sunglasses with their case. They're able to fit in there comfortably. I have my AirPods. And then you also have a little lanyard with a carabiner that's gonna be a good spot for your keys or a multi-tool or a flashlight, which is what I currently have here. You'll also start to get a little bit of a peek at the bright inner lining that the bag has to give you a lot of visibility. Below that, similar style compartment, maybe slightly taller. And again, good amount of volume, definitely makes these a lot more functional. And in this one here at the bottom, I just have a larger portable battery. And then I also have a lightning cable and wall adapter for my phone. Beyond that, no other internal organization here, but just nice, simple compartments. Then behind that, you have kind of a clamshell style admin organizational area. Always a big fan of having these larger admin compartments. I feel like they just give additional flexibility. This one also has some good built-in organization. And so starting off on the lid, you have a mesh zippered pocket with a zipper that's oriented vertically. So if you don't wanna unzip the whole thing, you can reach in here through the side and grab something that's being stored there. This reminds me a little bit of the layout on the GORUCK GR2. And like I've experienced with that one, I typically tend to pick and choose which of these pockets I use. I don't use them all because, you know, if you put something bulkier in this one, it might get more difficult to use these on the front, which I'm using more regularly, as well as this other zippered compartment on the other side, which also has a nice mesh and a good amount of volume. It's not elastic, but I was still able to fit this uh, USB kind of hub that I like to have with me when I have a little more space. This is great for coffee shops or areas where there's limited plugs. I have a couple of different USB-C adapters as well as some USB-A ports, uh, but good for other larger accessories, cables. And then on the back wall, you have a series of slip pockets. These don't have a ton of elasticity, but they do have a good amount of space. I didn't really have even enough items to use all of them because of the pouches that I tend to use, but I like that these are spacious enough for something like my mouse probably be a good spot for a smaller hard drive, another portable battery, multi-tools. I currently just have a pocket knife in there. And then you have a few small slots on the back for something like a pen, a stylus, 
And so with these type of pockets, you know, I imagine that it's tough to put bulkier items in both of them at the same time. So you can just kind of decide which work best for you. But I like that there's a variety and then that they just stay out of the way if you don't want to use them all. And then at the top, you have an additional RFID protected zippered area, which is nice. It also has a soft fleece lining. And uh, this is where I currently just have a wallet, the air card holder, as well as a field notes notebook. You could see this holding my passport or something a little bit more delicate if I wanna store my phone while I'm actually going about throughout the day. Nice to have that soft lining. So very useful pocket there. And then on the sides, we already talked a little bit about the water bottle pockets that the bag has, but it also has some additional insulated zippered pockets. So here on the side, you have this area here. You can see it has this lining that is gonna help keep whatever is in this compartment protected and separate from the other areas of the bag. And so this would be another good spot for a water bottle if you wanted to help it maintain a cooler temperature. This is one of those things where you can't really use both of these compartments for super bulky things at the same time. So I have a water bottle in here. This gets a little more limited, especially if you have the main compartment packed out, but still a really unique idea. This would probably also be a space where I might put like an umbrella that I know I've used in the rain that I wanna keep separate. So I really like having that additional pocket there. Same on the other side, very similar style, similar size. So the zipper goes all the way top to bottom. This is one of those areas where the bag is unique in that I haven't seen this on a ton of other backpacks. Um, so really cool that you have that option there. And then on the back, you also have two areas for a tablet and a laptop. These are dedicated areas. Reminds me a little bit of the layout on the older um, Axiom 24 packs from Triple Ot Design. And so you have a zipper on each side and they both have access to a well padded device area that has a really soft lining. So it's gonna help prevent against scratching, good amount of padding. It's also pulled up off the bottom of the ground to help prevent uh, any damage if you place your bag down harder, if you drop it. And so one area will be able to hold a full size 10 or 11 inch tablet or maybe even a secondary device. I currently have my iPad mini in here that fit in there very, very easily. And then on the other side, you have the second compartment, which for me is housing my 13 inch MacBook Air. This should be able to hold up to a 15 or 16 inch laptop. You can see there's leftover space at the top. And so pulling my laptop out, now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. I really like that both sides of these compartments are lined with this soft kind of fleece material. Again, to help provide a little bit more protection against scratching. They come up a decent amount. You will probably have to keep an eye on how thick the two devices are as I imagine that they will start to really press up against each other. I'm always worried about potential damage to the screens, but it's nice that these compartments kind of overlap, but they have their own separate lining space. So again, another unique aspect. I have not seen that on a ton of bags. And if you're somebody who carries multiple devices and you wanna keep them safe with the amount of padding that's offered here, the lining, it feels like they're gonna be very well protected throughout the day. One last thing to call out before moving into the main area, on the bottom of the bag, you have a dedicated shoe compartment, which is becoming a little more rare, I feel like, but I've always liked this as a feature, even if I don't always use it. This is great, particularly if you're trying to get something that you're using as a travel bag or a gym bag to keep your shoes separate from the other items in your bag. And so you have a good amount of space in this shoe compartment here. I, I wear an 11 and a half. These are Nike free runs. You can see that they fit in there pretty comfortably. I wouldn't imagine that anything much bigger than this would be able to fit too easily, maybe slightly bigger, but you know, it'll start to get a little bit tighter to kind of close this up. But still for me, this has worked really nicely. Uh, again, I like that it keeps the shoes separate from everything else. This is also helpful if you know, I'm going to the beach or the pool and I have some wet clothes or dirty clothes. This is just always nice to have a separate area to keep everything. And then you can, of course, let the liner air out. This does take up space from the main area. That is something that you'll have to keep in mind. I'll leave them in so I can show you how it kind of impacts the volume of the main area when you're using the shoes. Another thing to note here is that unlike some of the other gym bags like the uh, Duffel Pack 3 from Air or the Modern Day Fair backpack, this doesn't have ventilation holes on the bottom. Uh, so that might be something that when you arrive at your destination, you can leave this open and let it air out. This could potentially be better in some ways to provide more weather resistance when you place the bag down. 
just something I wanted to call out as being a little different. So like the fact that that's included for sure. And then moving into the main area, you have a great clamshell style opening, always excellent for just easier packing. And the zippers here don't lock in the traditional sense as some travel backpacks do. You can probably get away with using a smaller lock on the zipper poles, uh, but just wanted to note that. And then again, clamshell opening, easy access and visibility to everything. Now you can really start to see that yellow lining. I love the visibility that that provides. And yeah, you have a good amount of space with the 25 liters of capacity. Great for my modular style of organization. I have slightly less uh, pouches than I would typically have just because I have the shoes into the compartment already. And with the amount of stuff that I had in the other areas of the bag, you know, I kind of had to pick and choose again, what I wanted to carry. If I wanted to take full advantage of the space, I'd leave some of the other areas uh, a little more empty and then be able to fit my normal setup very easily. So diving into what I currently have here, the pouch that I have is the Civic Access one liter from Evergoods. Then I have my Beat Studio wireless headphones. I have my DJI Mavic Mini with its hard shell case. And then I also have a packable rain jacket. And then you can see here, the shoe compartment poking in takes a pretty decent amount of space, especially if you have bulkier kind of workout shoes like the ones that I have, you know, you'll have to keep that in mind, but um, you can just kind of push this down near the bottom if you don't have your shoes in the compartment on a particular day. And then below that, I also have my Levitate portable standing desk. To get a better feel for the rest of the compartment, I'm actually gonna take the shoes out so that I can move that pocket out of the way. I can move the liner here and and just kind of roll it down, push it to the bottom. And then on the inside here, you can see that it's a pretty simple layout. You do have an additional mesh slip pocket down near the bottom. So another good spot maybe for some socks or underwear, um, uh, another umbrella, a smaller water bottle, anything that you might want to store in here, chargers. And then with the amount of space that's offered here and just the simple layout that it has, I could definitely use this for minimal travel. I'd be able to toss in my typical compressible packing cube, a dot kit, an extra pair of shoes, and use it for a longer weekend trip. And on the back, you'll see that it has these two rows of Velcro that are meant to pair with a couple of accessories that the company has created to go along with this bag. So they sent over this shirt protector and a compressible, I guess, packing cube. Both of these have been pretty cool to use and they have rows of Velcro on the back that are meant to pair with the bag itself. And so you can put the shirt protector in there. And I don't use Velcro accessories that often, but in this case, I think it's actually quite useful to prevent something like a shirt protector from sliding down. This helps keep it in place to prevent the shirts that are on the inside from wrinkling. The Accessory itself is gonna do a lot of that work, but I have noticed that with packing cubes and things like that, everything, you know, just slides towards the bottom. Gravity does its thing, and sometimes your clothes can tend to shift around if they're not properly secured. So that's a really nice thing about having the Velcro on an accessory like this or the packing cube. And both of these have been really great to use. You know, I've used many of these types of accessories in the past, and I think the implementation here is really nice. The shirt protector has these most magnetic buttons here and you so you can pull it up very quick to get this open you have the zippers that go down and then it also includes this plastic um, sort of sheet that's gonna make it very easy to fold everything up so this is always great for dress shirts should be able to hold around three shirts I believe I'm a big fan of this style of accessory particularly for business travel or you know day-to-day -day if I have to change into a business outfit after working out so good amount of space durable materials and then the cube has a nice handle. It's got an RFID protected zippered pocket if you wanna maybe hide a passport or other sensitive items. And then as a cube itself, it works great. It's got the ability to expand and compress. So that's why it makes me think of a packing cube first and foremost. Uh, so you can expand it out. This is about the size of something like the Peak Design smaller packing cube. It's got the same lining on the inside. You have a little zipper area to separate some stuff out. Maybe if you have a tie, some socks, underwear. Um, and then I would probably put some t-shirts in here, maybe some shorts, and then compress it down. And it would be able to just kind of keep everything organized in the way that I typically like to. Again, both of these have the Velcro to help secure them to the bag. 
And I'm always a fan of when companies have their ecosystem of accessories that are designed specifically to work with their bags as it just feels a little bit more cohesive. So these have been great on their own, but also to work with the bag. I think it just makes the experience that much better. Um, but if you don't wanna use them, then the bag itself offers a ton of its own great value. And then on the back here, you have a couple more things. At the top, you have a little uh, loop here that's gonna be great for pairing with the pass-through that is included at the top if you wanted to use a hydration bladder. Uh, this isn't maybe the bag that I would use for hiking per se, but it's great to have kind of that extra bonus feature. And you have a zipper that I believe provides access to the frame sheet. This goes all the way down towards the bottom. Haven't really used that uh, for much. And then on the lid, you have an additional zipper pocket. I like that this area has a gusset to kind of allow it to expand out if you have something a little bit bulkier that you wanna store, maybe a jacket, some pouches. And if you don't wanna use it, it just stays out of the way. So. You know, fairly simple layout in this main area, but I like the amount of space that it offers and how well it integrates with the accessories that Graphene X has created to go with the bag. And in general, I just really love the design and layout of the bag all throughout. It's got a lot of unique features, a lot of flexibility. This is definitely something I could see myself using for many different use cases. And if you're looking for something that's gonna provide a lot of interesting functionality, that's gonna have a nice look, it's gonna be durable, this can be an awesome option to take a look at. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Limitless backpack over the past couple of weeks. You can currently pre-order this on the company's site for about $300, so definitely a bit of an investment. It is premium pricing. You are, however, getting a really well-built and feature-filled bag that's gonna cover a lot of use cases and is gonna hold up well against some of the other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag that this made me think of is the Modern Dayfarer backpack, which I've been a fan of for the past couple of years. It was recently updated, and I like that the bag kept most of what made the original so good, so it still has a very sleek, modern aesthetic that's gonna work well in a number of environments, particularly if you're looking for something maybe a little bit more professional. Uh, it's got a really rugged exterior fabric. The harness system was updated, so it's more comfortable to wear. It has a luggage pass-through, external water bottle pocket. Like this bag, it's meant to be sort of a commuter gym bag, so it's got a dedicated shoe compartment. The aesthetic and layout on that are a little different. That's a top loader, so it has an adjustable strap that allows you to either you know, give yourself a little bit more space or compress it down if you're not carrying as much stuff. Uh, but it also has the ability to open flat for easier packing. So a really versatile, interesting layout. The bag is a little more compact than this one. It doesn't sound like a lot based off the volume. This one is 25 liters, that one is 24 liters about, but it just feels a little uh, more streamlined and sleeker. It also has a well-padded, dedicated laptop compartment. So, you know, kind of checking off a lot of the similar boxes as this one here. And if you're interested in something that has different aesthetic and layout, but that's gonna work for a lot of the same purposes, that's gonna be a great one to take a look at. The next bag this made me think of is the Evergood CTB26, which really is the one that sets the standard as far as the features that I look for in an all-purpose bag. So it's got a great luggage pass-through, it's a comfortable harness system, a well-padded and suspended laptop compartment, external water bottle pockets, and a really great organizational layout. It doesn't have maybe all the same pockets as this one, but the ones that it has are very, very well thought out and useful. I also really like the minimal kind of rugged aesthetic that it has. Evergood's bags in general are meant to be kind of a crossover appearance that can work well in the outdoors as well as for, you know, exploring a city. Um, so I'm a big fan of that look. And feature-wise, you know, it's a really great, similar kind of comparison to this one. Both of them check off a lot of the boxes, but again, if you're looking for something with a slightly different aesthetic, or, you know, you're a big fan of Evergoods' layouts in general, then that's gonna be, you know, the best option to take a look at. Another bag this made me think of is the Air Duffel Pack 3. I've been a big fan of Air's active collection since it came out. They've continued to iterate on those bags. Every version gets a little bit better. And the third edition was really great to use overall. The active collection has, you know, the distinct sort of duffel layout. So it's got a duffel opening versus a clamshell style. So you can place it down, easily organize all of your stuff. That one also has a dedicated shoe compartment to keep your dirty shoes or wet clothes separate from the rest of the items in your bag. Then it's just got a really nice, simple layout, a couple of quick access pockets, water bottle pocket. It's got a tech area with a well padded laptop compartment. Um, so, you know, just a really versatile bag. Air, of course, also has some very rugged materials, you know, really nice ballistic nylon that's gonna be durable, weather resistant, and one of the most comfortable harness systems of any bags on the market. So if you're looking for something like this, it's gonna be a good gym bag, work bag, 
uh, but that's gonna have a little bit of a different layout if you prefer something with more of a duffel versus a clamshell layout, and that's gonna be an awesome option to consider. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Timbuktu Never Check Expandable Backpack, which is a bag that I've enjoyed using for a couple of years now, continues to really hold up against many of the newer bags that have come out. That one, like this one, has a pretty modern, minimal aesthetic. It's gonna work well in many different environments. It's got a nice organizational layout. It doesn't have as many pockets or bells and whistles as this bag per se, uh, but it does make it very you know, easy to access everything that you need. It's got an external water bottle pocket, a laptop compartment that is easy to access as well. The unique aspect on that one is that it's able to expand to give you a little bit more capacity for traveling or if you have a longer day to day. So if you are going to the gym or something like that, it will expand to be able to handle some additional clothing um, and then compress down if you just need a more kind of streamlined, slightly smaller bag for your day to day. So really like the kind of layout on that, very useful, a little simpler. And if you're looking for something that's gonna be travel focused and give you that flexibility with the expansion, then the Never Check Expandable Backpack is gonna be an awesome option to take a look at. With that being said, the Limitless Backpack holds up really well against all those options and has quickly become one of the most impressive bags that I've checked out this year. It's really surprising that this is the first bag that the company's releasing. They really hit it out of the park. And if you're looking for a versatile bag that can pretty much do it all and is gonna offer some unique features that you won't find on a ton of other bags, then this is gonna be a fantastic option to take a look at. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the Limitless Backpack and how it compares to some of the other popular tech and EDC bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.